interviewing it a bit a month later, yeah. and I moved to Gloucestershire. So um, that's when I got in. Yeah, and that was was that the steps? Yeah, that was that steps. steps. And that's where I met you, Mike. That's wasn't right, it? Yeah. Came down, yeah. introduced, and you yeah. showed me around that that's museum. Right. It was wonderful, wasn't it? It was fabulous. Yeah. It sadly closed um, yeah. a couple of years ago yeah. now, but yeah. it was a fantastic place, and it was it was there that the equine link happened. Yes, um, Sam, who you know. Yeah. Um, when we were setting up steps, we were thinking about what we wanted it to be like, and mm. and Sam had seen Twenty Eight Days with Sandra Bullock. Yeah, that was the whole concept yeah. of bringing horses in. Yeah, yeah. And she just kept saying, "I want horses. <laughs> Whatever happens, I want horses." <laughs> so we found this couple, David and Ali Titmarsh. They came across. Well, they came and trained us, didn't they? Yeah. yeah, down there. Did you know horses before, Mike? No, not at all. No experience okay. with them at all. Mm. Um, I went riding once, I think, when I was a teenager, and that's all I, yeah, okay. I remember. Um, so what did you think when they said, when Sam said to you, oh, well, there must be horses in but this? I, honestly, I thought this is drivel. I, thought, I just thought it was American <laughs> schmuck, you know what I mean? And I, I thought this is going to be mad, but I went with it. Yes. Um, and that first day with David, and I remember a demonstration they did, um, and they were, they were both wearing boom microphones. Yes. And yeah. and they looked, there was three horses loose in this menage. Yeah. And, and David said, I'm going to speak to Annie, but I'm just going to raise my voice slightly as if there's some conflict. Yeah. Um, and we want you to watch the horses. So I was sitting cynical, kind of staring out. And, um, and all they did was just slightly raise the volume. And one of the three horses came right across and split them up, went right between them and pushed the female Push the conflict, push away. her out of conflict. Um, and I can remember a big tear coming in my mind mm. thinking, oh my goodness, <laughs> what, what have we got here? What's that about? Yeah, and the minute I knew I was getting emotional, because 20 years in mental health, you become hardened. Do you know what I mean? You become you talked about. cynical, yeah, if you like. Yeah. Um, and suddenly I went, oh my goodness, there's something here that I would like to explore yeah. further. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's how it all started. And we did, we kind of... Luckily, we had, we had a captive audience because it was the, the patients that were in steps that were forced to do it every week. Yeah. Um, and we saw, continually, we saw amazing things happening. We saw people that we thought were beyond treatment yeah. or were too blocked to actually engage in the process. We saw them coming to equine and suddenly breaking and, and, and having communication with these horses. Um, um, what's your theory behind that? What, why was it? Why could they engage with the horse what th- what was that i think now looking back with the experience i've got i think it's there's a, a whole thing about horses not judging yeah. there's a, a whole yeah. thing about physical contact um one of the first girls i worked with had an eating disorder um anorexia serious she was she, her bmi was about 5.5 or something really emaciated and she wouldn't engage in the program at, um, and i took her to equine and we went into a field, I remember it, it was all mares and a couple of them had foaled. Um, and the minute we opened the gate, they all turned and looked. And when we went in and shut the gate, they all came up to her. And they were all surrounding her, me and the, the Jeremy, the other guy, yeah. stood back and just let this happen. And we saw her physically change. And she started playing and stroking and the horses were... Even the, the, the foals' mothers were pushing them in with their noses. Pushing the falls in towards her, to meet her. Um, and I was just watching this in amazement and asking her the occasional question because she was, there was one man in particular that she was really close with and was standing almost touching with her face all the time. And she looked at me and said, it's the first living being that's been this close to me for a long time. And she felt the horse's breath and she had never felt anybody that close. So even that was a major thing for me as a therapist. Mm. Oh my goodness, I hadn't even thought. So the first of that relationship concept. was going to be with an animal, yeah. with the horse. Yeah. It's not non-judgmental. Yeah, absolutely. And she started this dialogue. She was talking to the horse, okay. um, and one of the things she said was, "Why are, why are men so rough?" She was saying to this mare. Um, uh, and I just kind of again <laughs> stood back and looked at Jeremy and then, oh my goodness. And then, and I said to her, what's happening for you? And she said, um, she started disclosing an abuse that had oh, happened wonderful. within the family. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't until later when I was processing that it turned out that the mayor was the only one in the field that had never fold. 
because the, the stallions were too rough and she kicked oh, them off all the time. So there's this, that's so amazing, that's happens. that empathic yeah. connection, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. That's the beauty, isn't it? And having just done some work with oh. Lee Shambu, it's about the, the limbic and yeah. mammalian brain connecting. Yeah, absolutely. Completely connecting. Yeah. Yeah. And transferring that information back and forward. Amazing. And that kind of stuff happens weekly, regularly. Every session yeah. something happens yeah. Um, yeah. of that ilk. Yeah. Brilliant. So what, I mean, from there really, Sam, um, well, we all decided this could be spread out to other areas. It doesn't need to be just addiction. Yeah. We kind of built our, our database and our experience around addiction, but we decided when the opportunity arises, we'll move to other areas and try it in other areas. Mm -hmm. um, so Sam formed Leap. Yes. So that became a yeah. separate charity yeah. from... Which is still there today. It's still going, yeah, yeah. It's still going. Yeah. Beautiful horses down there. Fabulous horses, yeah. <laughs> and Leap's been able to spread the word and work with a whole lot of... We started working with um, young people. Yeah. We did work with adults with post-traumatic stress. Yes. We've did um, women who are living in domestic violence. We've done perpetrators of domestic violence. Other mental health issues, depression, bipolar. Yes. That kind of stuff. We've got workshops running. So it's over the past five years, say, it's took off hugely. Yeah, so the remit's huge out there. Absolutely but, massive, absolutely yeah, massive. I know you talk about ADHD as well. ADHD, I mean, we did, um, last year, from 2010 to 2011, we got one year funding from Children in Need okay. to run a research project, and, and um, we worked with 40 children and eight groups of five, and each of the groups did eight weeks each, so it was a really huge piece of work. It's enormous. Every Friday, oh, yeah. um, we had a group in the morning, yeah. A group in the afternoon. Now, um, my experience was all with adults. I was like, I don't want to work with children. But Sam was saying, please just try. And I was going, I'm not working with children, especially teenagers. Don't want <laughs> to don't, I don't want the verbal abuse and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I was so wrong. I was absolutely so wrong because for the very first group, yeah. I just loved the children. They were the most amazing children <laughs> that I'd ever, ever worked with. And these were kids that were sexually traumatised from young ages by their families, mm. had grown up and become inappropriate themselves. So they weren't adult offenders, but they were on the road to becoming if something wasn't done. Because they had no boundaries, they never knew what was right and what was wrong, because they had been so violated. Um, and working with them taught me so much and gave me so much connection. Um, and again, the horses, we had kids that nobody else, they were excluded for everything. Yeah. So there was social workers bringing them in yeah. and dropping them off like with that attitude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, see what sort you can do out, with that. Sort yeah. them out, not really expecting anything to happen. And then within a couple of weeks, the social workers were coming up to us and saying, what are you doing here? Because they're changing, they're different. How do you get that response for them? Because they were running around going, hi Mike, hi Ella, giving us hugs, <laughs> saying, can we do this today, can we do that? And it was just a bit of respect. Yeah, we treated them with absolute respect. We set boundaries about what we expected from them. Yeah. Um, but even the, the, the um, literature and the research suggests that children who've been through that don't have empathy. Um, don't engage with well in groups, don't do all these, don't, don't, don't. But you've changed it. That totally so it's changed. So that, it's that connection yeah. into the horse, isn't it? And the horses just were amazing with the cats. And some of the horses would just look up and choose. With each group, there was a probably the most damaged kid in each group, and you could identify them quickly. Yeah. And certain horses would identify them first and come through and work with them and keep... Every week they would stick their head up and they would go to that same person every week and work with them. Um, and we started getting letters off the kids to the horses, they were writing to the horses. Beautiful yeah. letters about how much they loved them. And so it was the first trust and um, safe relationship they had had um, and it was with horses. It's beautiful, it's mm. moving. Yeah. It is moving. I've done a you know, small amount of work with the children and the mothers and things. So yeah, it's just so moving. It is, and it they is. they would bring the children would be referred, but the mothers would come in, yeah. Yeah. And, and the greatest engagement with the horses was then through the mothers who yeah. then learnt to re-engage with their children. It's, true. it's, it's beautiful work. We had one They're group. Magic we had one group of children who were living in domestic violence. Yeah, 
and while the children were with us doing the echo and what the yeah. mothers were in the classroom, yeah. and they started forming this group among themselves, themselves in the classroom. Yeah. But they were coming back every week and telling us about changes yeah. in the children. I mean, it all came really, if you, if you think about the beginnings in America, there's um, Barbara Rector, who yes. I love dearly. Mental health. Yeah, yeah. she yeah. started it all really. She was the foundation of it all, wasn't she? she? Was. Yeah. But what happened was lots of kids in America were getting flung out of the cities yeah. because of the behaviour. Yeah. And were getting sent to kind of boot camps on the ranches. Okay. And it was on just work. It was yeah. physical work, just horses. going clean out the horses. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the cowboys that were running the ranches started seeing the kids' behaviour changing. Yeah. Just yeah. little subtle things. And they thought, well, there's something going on here. Yeah. So that's where it all sprung yeah. from. And now it's so... I mean, there's so much stuff happening. It's wonderful. There. It's it, and there's research going in, yeah. and and then hopefully more and more funding and more yeah. potential. Yeah. And a, a great service of horses to humanity. They've served us for centuries. Oh my goodness, they have. In battle and in life and in transport. Yeah. And now in this age in which we live, there's so much chaos out there, so much emotional distress, yeah. so much addiction. Yeah. What's happening? The horses are coming. So yeah. we can help you with that. Coming back, so we, we're coming we back. Can deal Watch with us, and then. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing stuff, Mike. It's just wonderful. Uh, no, it is. I'll and uh, I can see you've had such a foundation to do the work that you do, so that's why you're so good at it. <laughs> Thank you. But you've, you've got some things coming up this year, I see, as well. You've got quite a big year. I see BACP of endorsing LEAP. The BACP, that's the British Association yeah. of Counseling and Psychotherapy, Absolutely. have been fantastic. They came and spent a day with us. Um, so we put them through the paces, let them see different things that we do. So they kind of bought it, they understood immediately what and we were doing. And they bought into which is one of us, you know, counselling out there and, and psychotherapy at the moment, under quite a, a drive to, yeah. to regulate yeah. it so much. And yeah. some of the more um, outside, more creative aspects are, are not getting the best. No, they're not. They're not getting they're the not. best publicity, are they? So it's wonderful that you, they're going to underpin Equine. Well, they are, and I mean, they've endorsed... Um, Two of my workshops already, so if you come and do one, you it's get BACP, seven hours, yeah. CPD. And we um, all need our need, regulating bodies yeah, behind us to allow us to, to function yeah. and to work with. And they've just agreed, also just done a submission, they've agreed, because um, Lee Shambo from America yeah. contacted me last year, she wants to come over and, and run some trainings here. So we agreed to work jointly and we formed the Heal Leap Institute. So I see. Now that's wonderful because that's quite that's quite a that's a really deep way of working with horses. Yeah. I think in the early days we were taught quite mechanically, weren't we? Yeah. And then I what I would say the the magic came in this empathic empathic work. Yeah. This great feels to me. I work as a psycho spiritual counselor. Yeah. It is the epitome of psycho. It's absolutely amazing. I've just went to train and do some work with Lee. I've just come back from America and I was standing in fields with horses yes. getting in touch with stuff that I never even knew was yeah. there to get in touch with because I've done so much kind of self-development work yes. but um, when you get to that level of communication and understanding with a horse it's hugely powerful. It is powerful. It's it, To me it feels like sheer magic. It, it is. It's, it's, it really it's, is. It's, it's, it's spiritual at its greatest depth. And you can deal with things soul like... Soul work. Yeah. It's it soul, soul work. work. It is. It is. Soul work, yeah. And as far as um, therapeutically, I've seen clients with PTSD, which is yes. really, really difficult to work with. Absolutely. Um, but with a horse, they don't need to go into the dialogue. They don't need to tell the horse what happened. No. The, the horse we, knows. There's just the a horse kind of, feels it out through that connection. great limbic yeah. system. Absolutely. Isn't it? That's it. It's pure sensation. So the horse just seems to trip a switch that frees something. And I can stand back and just allow the client and to be... It starts to release. Starts to come and starts start to, to cry. Release it, and they can release it with it, all that flashback and memories. Yeah. And a oh. therapist saying, tell me what happened. It's no good, is no, it? It's it's you've got to have that bodily, that deep tissue release. Yeah, it's the issue it's, in the tissue, is yes, the call. It's it, all yeah. called issue in the yeah. tissue. Is that yeah. what it's yeah. called, yeah? And using with the soldiers. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just amazing that the stuff I'm learning now, and that's where we're going to be teaching this, the Heal Leap course is um, very much about reflective work, yeah. very much about measuring where you are yeah. along with the horse. So there's yeah. lots of energetic work, energetic work with your body yeah. and, and reading your body to understand where the horse is. and what. It's amazing what energy you can send out without even thinking about it. Do you know what I mean? And I'm quite aware, I'm quite aware of my energy and how it can impact. But I saw horses in America that would not come near 
because my energy was still so strong and I send out a kind of a yang energy that's inappropriate sometimes yeah. um, because I'm so I so want them to do something positive <laughs> I know. and um, and the message I got was it's okay yeah, I know what you want yeah. just back off yeah you don't need I, to do I that. always say that I the two horses I've got now I've had horses for years but these these two that I've had I've learned more about how to be authentic and oh, real, absolutely. and when when it, the energy is not good and not right, then I l learn in any therapy room or yeah. any trainer, any supervision. Yeah. They're like absolute mirrors. They're they're huge reflectors, yeah. and uh, I just feel humbled in the presence of horses. Yeah, no, I do. Absolutely, I've got a lot to learn about absolutely. about how to work our energy. Yeah. And those are patterns of a lifetime, aren't they? And I still before if I've got a group of children coming. I'll go into the field first because I need to measure yeah. what my energy is doing yeah. to the horses what, before I bring anybody else in. Yeah, well that's beautiful. Yeah. So now from that mechanical early day training, yeah. you, you've gone down that beautiful route. Yeah. It's, With uh, a lot of help, but I, I think it comes from spending so much time doing it. Yeah. Um, that you really get to know your horse. I know my herd really well now, yes. but I can still go into another herd and, yes. and work. And, and kind of connect and, and feel start okay. to feel it up. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. in the end, that's what happens. You actually feel the horse. And, and to see what they know, and um, the amount of times I've in sessions I've had to really struggle to contain my emotions <laughs> because it becomes so powerful <laughs> watching what uh, the horses know. No, it is. Actually, it's moving work, oh, isn't it? It really is amazing. There's a, a documentary I did a few years ago with BBC, and there was a girl called Teresa yeah. who. Um, She's in the video, but the actual event which happened, I took her down to see the horses because she wasn't engaging. She had come from a London borough, serious drug user, she was sleeping on the street. She was really, really mm. one of the most damaged addicts I've met in my life. Um, and she wouldn't engage with the staff and steps and they said to me, will you take her down to Equine? So I went down to Equine and thought, I'll just walk through the fields, let her meet some of the horses. The minute we got near a horse, I mean, this kind of weathered, damaged body with needles, and mm. she just kind of transformed into this young girl. She started hanging off the mm. horse's neck and smiling and laughing. The person she was meant <clears> to be. Absolutely. And I said, What's happening, Teresa? And she went, I've just remembered I used to go to horses when I was a child, before all the, all the terrible stuff happened. <clears throat> but what happened was we went and there was three fields, and she was wandering, and at one point there was two horses for one field, little ponies, and three horses from the field we were in, and they were all nibbling and biting at her and nuzzling her. <laughs> she was laughing and crying at the same time. And I said, what's happening for you, Teresa? And she said, I've had five children taken into care. And we never even knew that. It wasn't even in a <laughs> that, that is when it goes into the realms Absolutely. of how can you understand yeah. or explain it. There is no explanation. No. The sheer, sheer beauty of to me the magic yeah, of the universe yeah. and the world and yes. the connectivity and the energy yeah. and the, we're all connected up and we just if we can get back there yes. well I think with it'll take a long time but I think if we could work towards I think if equine was part of the curriculum yes. and kids were made to yeah. come and have it as part of their yeah. education watch the natural world yeah yeah we're part of it and that can yeah. show us our way home to ourselves yeah. beautiful and I see great things you're going to, uh, you're, you've been invited to speak for the Royal College of, or Psychiatric Conference. That's amazing. That's, That's big for you, major, Mike, isn't it? Look where you come from and not your goodness, with these psychiatrists. Yeah. The Royal College of Psychiatrists, yeah. <laughs> that um, shocks me because... Um, well, you deserve to be there, Mike, I know that. Well, thank you very much. But just the fact that this group of professionals have decided, let's look at this. I wonder what sort There's of response you're going to get. Who knows, I'll be interested. I hope you have a few smiling faces. Yeah, I think. A couple of them I know, a couple of them oh, are Deborah. Oh, oh, yes, I know Deborah. I've got to be in a moment because right. they've done yes, it. Yes, um, yeah, yes. Yeah, so. But the fact that they're willing to listen and to have 300 yeah. psychiatrists yes. in one room, if 10 of them go away. I think I'd find that terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think if they can, if we can even get a few projects yeah, running from yeah. them. Brilliant, good on you, Mike. Well done. That Thank was you. An absolute pleasure and very moving. To start with, but um, very honest and uh, beautiful, wonderful work, great, Mike. Thank you. Pleasure to know you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.